gargoyles. Grotesque stone statues designed to funnel water away from a roof and from eroding the mortar of a masonry wall beneath. Gargouille is derived from throat in French, which of course references how they use their throats as drains to filter the water away. So there is a practical reason for these creepy demonic fellas other than to give birds and people who look up the heebie-jeebies. I mean, it could be that, couldn't it? That these are like ancient drains. But it could also be that they are a species of nocturnal creatures that were petrified in 10th century Scotland that have been reawakened as vigilantes in 1990s New York. It could be that as well. And for the purposes of this video, we are taking that second explanation as gospel as we look at the Mega Drive exclusive Gargoyles by Buna Vista Interactive Games. But before we take a goosey gander at the Gargoyles video game, it's important to see what all this is about, else a lot of us will be shrugging and mystified by all this chicanery. I didn't watch a great deal about it, so I hope you're as curious as me. Gargoyles was an animated series produced by the Walt Disney Television Studio, which had been on a hell of a run over the previous decade with shows like Tailspin, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, Darkwing Duck and DuckTales. This show was a bit of a departure from those shows, no doubt a attempt by Disney to get some of the shine off the likes of some of the darker tones of superhero cartoons such as Batman the Animated Series, the X-Men cartoon and the Spider-Man Animated Series. This is of course during a time when Disney didn't have ready access to over a thousand heroes since they bought Marvel. So they invented their own Dark City Vigilantes. Gargoyles, as previously mentioned, finds these stone uggos frozen into stone form for a thousand years before a billionaire has them moved to a skyscraper from their original moorings on a Scottish castle. And yes, a thousand years previously, they had been frozen on the side of that castle and were cursed to remain that way until they were above the clouds. And you know what? Being on a skyscraper, that is above some clouds. So yes, it's all a lot of old plot hookum to have muscular, scary Batman-like demon heroes in New York, and we should all be for it, in my opinion. It's a fondly remembered but short-lived series that ran for three years, and is an extreme rarity in the fact that it hasn't made a comeback as yet. However, rumours of a movie adaption continue to be made, though given Disney's hero cup doth overfloweth, I can't see it myself, certainly not soon. Oh, and one more thing, Gargoyles had quite the connection with Star Trek. Appearing in the show as voices is a veritable who's who of Star Trek fan favourites with Jonathan Frakes, Marina Sirtis, Nichelle Nichols, Michael Dorn, Levar Burton, Kate Mulgrew, Cole Meany, Avery Brooks and Brent Spiner all having roles in the show. But enough about spacefarers in skin-tight tracksuits dallying about the place trying to solve other people's problems. Let's get back to the Rockefellers and their video game. Gargoyles was an exclusive for the Mega Drive, or if you prefer, the Genesis, as I'm forced to say for that one person from Shooty School, Arizona, who will watch this. A Super Nintendo version was also planned, but was ultimately cancelled. However, source code was released by Chief Walt Disney Computer Programmer Chris Shrigley in 2012. This was indeed the last game by Walt Disney Computer Software before they were rebranded and reorganised as Disney Interactive. While being the former company, their most famous title was probably the Super Nintendo Rocketeer game. A game that was notoriously bad. But don't hit the skedaddle train as yet. It's not quite as awful as that. Gargoyles is an 18 level side scroller starring that great grey gargoyle Goliath. As he takes on the duty of destroying the Eye of Odin. A relic that will prove to be a pain in the touche to anyone who likes the earth. In one piece and all unapocalyptic. The game starts off pretty well. A horde of Vikings set upon the Gargoyles' ancestral home of Castle Wyvern 
back in the Dark Ages, and it's there that we're introduced to the game's rather attractive graphical style. It's a post-Aladdin Mega Drive Disney game, all hand-drawn sprites and smooth animation. You will certainly see more ugly Mega Drive games, that's for sure. However, now's probably a terrible time to say this, that I preferred Aladdin on the Super Nintendo. Yes, I'm one of those contrarian dickheads. This is the best looking game I've ever seen on the Mega Drive. The graphics are just like you're watching a cartoon. There's nothing special about the gameplay though. Basically, I found the gameplay in the Mega Drive game was about as fun as parsnip soup. Yeah, it was very, very pretty, far prettier than the Super Nintendo version, but it was a deathly average game for me to play. Part of the issue I had with Jungle Book and Aladdin and Lion King and all of these wonderful 16-bit Sega Disney games were their absolute devotion to animation that for me personally had a detrimental effect to the controls and the feel of the game as a whole. As I say, just to me anyway. And well, that feel is exemplified here by a slightly more complex set of controls that incorporate climbing, throws and a brief hovering flight as well. Still, I'm happy to admit that I am wrong on most things and my reluctance to accept Sega Aladdin as a bona fide classic is at best a farcical example of me being an absolute idiot. The opening levels on Gargoyles are absolutely grade A hand-drawn Sega Disney platformer goodness if that floats your vessel. It has its niggles though. There's a lot of tricky jumps which, in the best case scenario, can have you plummeting back to the base of the screen to re-attempt several times. In the worst case scenario, you'll land in lava and burn your whip crack frumpy tail and your beast will be done. Eventually, you'll get through it though. All the levels are frustrating, but they are achievable with the right attitude. An attitude which, unfortunately, I do not have. Another issue is the level design doesn't make it immediately obvious on what you have to do if you want to make a bit of progress. But despite this, if you're a fan of these highly animated platformers, I'm sure you'll have a grand old time indeed. The levels set in medieval time are full of hand-drawn Vikings, as well-drawn as your gargoyle himself. It is unfortunately when you get to the present day where I think the game struggles quite a bit. Well, I say present day, it's 1994, but you know what I mean. And well, there's some nice touches here and there. The graphics for the backgrounds remain strong throughout. And there are cool sequences in the game, like when you're on the train, and the bit where you can dive through the roof of the building and crash through several floors because your gargoyle is a big, satchel-bottomed, heavy bum-bum man. That bit certainly made me go, ooh, this is a bit swanky for a 16-bit game. But the problems in the earlier levels come to a head here in the 1994 ones. You see, the vertical levels just get more vertical and those singular hits that will send you plummeting a long way back to the bottom of where you were climbing from, they get more and more grinding on your temper. And worse, that lava that scorched your rump is removed and instead of taking slight damage there's just a big hole where you'll lose a life and as you only get a few lives and one continue that'll be the end of the game and probably the end of your tether. These aren't the only problems however. The hand-drawn vikings from the earlier levels are replaced by some really crap looking CG pre-rendered characterless robots. Really dull looking things they are too. And not only that, they're an absolute beggar to deal with. The hit detection in the game gets infuriating at times when you try and attempt a throw or a punch and it doesn't seem to make contact. All in all, I found Gargoyles an enormous chore. I'm not discounting how ambitious the game is at all. It is, for the most part, a real looker, a real royster toister of a late 16-bit console effort. The mechanics relating to the agility and fighting of Goliath are really good in concept, but it was always fighting an uphill battle with me. I haven't watched much of the show, I wasn't really a fan of this style of platformer, and my temper is way too short for vertical levels with frustrating elements, no matter how creative and pretty Gargoyles looks. Now while I didn't like it, plenty of others did. 
GamePro gave it full marks in February 1996 and Reckon Gargoyles gives you the rewarding gameplay and gorgeous scenery associated with games like Vector Man and Earthworm Jim 2. Game Informer said that if you found joy in Aladdin and The Lion King, you'll receive the same thrill from Gargoyles but at a darker level. They gave it an 8.5 out of 10 in November 1995. EGM were a little more tempered in their enthusiasm. They gave it scores ranging from 4 out of 10 to 7.5 out of 10, and they said that the controls were frustrating. So for me and EGM, it didn't rock us, but for most, it's a stone cold classic. Yes, puns. I usually end these things with puns, and I'm doing it again now. It is what it is. Next up, we go from granite to gold and some very mysterious cities on the Nintendo DS. I would sing the theme tune, but you're probably doing it in your head already. Like, subscribe and K thanks bye and sorry I didn't like bloody gargoyles. <laughs> 